and welcome to Video GearCast. I'm Kevin Peck, I'm your host, and uh, our guest today is John Tatoulis from Sound Devices. You've flown in all the way from Reedsburg, Wisconsin. Indeed. Was it a direct flight? And, direct. Uh, well, we bypassed weather, through, yeah. through Denver, so it wasn't too uh, bad. For people who don't know where that is, that's probably, what, a 45-minute drive maximum? 45 minutes, yeah. There you go. Yeah, thank you for coming all the way in. You brought us a really cool product, though, to learn about and train the sales staff on, and we wanted to share it with the GearCast audience. Uh, brand new for you guys, a, another wonderful field recording mixer and recorder, the 552. Indeed. Well, John, let's uh, let's take everybody through it, uh, but we're going to make sure we get some good close-ups because you've packed so many inputs and outputs and adjustments and cool things into this thing that it's going to need some close-ups as we go. So, okay. you want to start at the front panel? Or? Indeed. The 552 is our newest field mixer, and what we've done is we've taken the heritage of our field mixers, and we have two-channel, three-channel, and four-channel products, and we've updated our four-channel field mixer, the 442, which was quite popular, and we've added quite a bit of power to it. One of the first things we did was to go from four channels to five channels. So the 552 is now five channels. And one of the big questions a lot of people ask is, why five channels? And for a lot of applications, especially reality shows and unscripted drama applications, they want one boom and four wireless. And oftentimes they want more channels than just five, but uh, five is a really nice sweet spot because we can have it in a very compact product, very small chassis that's very lightweight, yet still have lots of I.O. So let's talk a little bit about what this 552 is. And basically what this is is a compact little console. And it has very, very similar features to a lot of full-featured performance consoles. So each of the inputs, each of the five inputs, has an input limiter, which is very important for field mixing, especially when you have uncontrolled uh, dynamic range and such. You might have somebody who's yelling at one point or whispering at another point. You have to have input limiters. And the 552 has five input limiters as well as a two mix output limiter. So that not only are you not going to overload the inputs, you're also going to be able to have your output go into your camera or your recording device and have it scaled exactly as you need. So when we talk exactly about what each of the inputs has, and we'll bring up this, this input here, and you'll see the, uh, the big fader we have. We also have a, just like a console, we have a trim control. And this trim control is our coarse gain. And one of the things about a field mixer that's a little different than a, than a studio console, for instance, is we have a lot of gain. There may be applications where microphones are distant, or you're picking up very low level kinds of sounds. So a field mixer has to have a lot of clean gain. And we have up to, I believe, 92 dB of gain from input to output. So there's a, a pair here. You're, you're way off mic, and yet this is getting... Right, uh, so we have, we have a tremendous amount of gain th that's available if you need it. And you can scale that with that input trim control so that you can have each of your inputs at a nice unity gain position. We additionally have a fully variable high pass, and that's important because there's a lot of rumble sounds or trucks rolling by or wind noise that you want to diminish. And that's a uh, fully variable high pass, just like you would on a console. Each of the inputs also has a solo switch on it so that we can very quickly solo something. So if we're hearing something that's unusual, we can very quickly solo in headphones without interrupting our program so we can find that. The, uh, the inputs on the unit, we'll look at the inputs here. We have five inputs on XLRs, and we also have these TA3 connections below that. And the TA3 connections, those are our direct outputs. Those can be menu selected to be pre-fade or post-fade. So we can use these pre-fade to another console. We can build a completely different mix, or we can essentially use our faders and mix to the isolated channels individually. And those pre-fades, those direct outs are they're pre- or post-fade. They are post-high pass and post-input uh, limiter. So they're giving you all the good tools that you need to get a nice, clean direct output signal. The inputs are mic or line switchable, and we have phantom power selected on each of the inputs. And interestingly, we've moved from what historically we had used hard physical switches for mic line switching. We now use front panel shortcuts. So what that means is with a very simple change from mic to line, I can take that input from microphone level to line level by using a very quick short front panel shortcut. So if I have wireless levels coming into it, and they may not be quite hot enough for a line level, mm -hmm. but they might be stronger than a, than a, uh, than a mic level, I can, I can make those adjustments as I go. 
and I can turn phantom on and off if I'm using a ribbon microphone or something and I don't want to have phantom on. I can and everything do that. recesses then to lock it into the settings, so yep. whether it's the pan or the, the gain settings, it's just a push and lock it at that setting, is that right? Exactly. So we have pan, and these are push pots, and so we can pan between our two output buses. So we have these five inputs, and then we also have MS stereo matrix and MS linking on pairs one and two and three and four. So that's a common uh, tool for a lot of the portable field mixers. When we look at the output section, we've got, let's go back into, uh, we'll go back to micro microphone level so that we have some meters bouncing here. I should point out, now, they're hearing our audio not through this device. Correct. So as he's cutting in the, the uh, high pass filter, don't expect to hear any differences. Right. This, is, this is only showing this microphone. Yes. We're connected directly to the camera. Although we could have done it the other way, this would have been a great device to uh, show off. Sure. Uh, but certainly for uh, field productions like uh, what we're doing, a uh, great way to bring in additional sources. Yes. When you're out in the field, the three most important elements are going to be monitoring, listening in headphones, metering, and level control. So we've got nice full-size level controls with our nice big faders here. And we have an incredibly informative meter. We're seeing both peak information and VU information. So we're seeing compression happen as we, uh, as we see the peak and the VUs start to vary their, their levels between the two. So we've got lots of information on the meter. And in fact, we also have a, what's called a zoom mode. And there's an LED that goes on. And now we're only seeing the very top metering. So if we're going down to a digital source and we want to maximize to zero dBFS, we can zoom in and we can now see just the very top portion of the metering in our zoom mode. So zoom mode is quickly toggled by hitting the What sort of steps are involved at that point? Then? So at that point, it's 1 dB increments on the meter mm. that you're seeing from the top part of the scale down. The normal metering scale is going to show you from a plus 20 dBU signal down to a minus 30 dBU mm -hmm. signal. One of the things that we found as we were developing this product is that lots of field mixers are paired up with sound devices recorders or other portable recorders. And that's just a natural companion because you oftentimes want to have a local recording, whether it's for transcription applications or a safety backup or something like that. So now with the 552, we've infused it with some of our 7 Series recorder expertise. And now embedded within the recorder, uh, within the mixer, is a fairly high performance, well, a very high performance and a fairly feature-rich two-channel recorder. So by simply pushing our little joystick up, we are now recording whatever is going to our left and right output buses. So that gives us the power of a, of a very simple controlled recorder right at the faceplate. And we record to an SD card, and that SD card is on the back side, and we can write to STHC or standard SD cards, and capacity is up to 32 gigabytes. You mentioned in, in practical application, uh, most crews automatically record, regardless of where else you're yep. recording, they automatically record a safety here, which makes uh, great right. sense. And oftentimes for transcription, they're going to be recording an MP3, especially news magazine style uh, productions, or if it's a, a network type of event, that might be part of the requirement for their deliverables. So the recorder embedded in the unit is, is something that's very powerful because it doesn't add any additional size or any additional connections and cabling or complexity to your kit. So it's right embedded right within this little two pound, three pound device. Three pound? Now, uh, this is all self-contained, and it still has room for batteries. So uh, right. uh, tell us about that and what, yep. what sort of operating life we can expect. Yeah, let's, let's move it around here. The, uh, the unit itself is powered off of four AA batteries. And this is the battery tube here, and this is a captive little cap here. And so it can be powered from either four AA's or external 10 to 18 volts DC. So a typical kit will be... Uh, a sound bag that has your field mixer and it's also powering some of your wireless receivers. And that's a very c typical complement. So it's a very power efficient device. And in fact, even with all this digital power that we have, it draws very similar current to all of our full analog mixers. All the analog, all, all the audio path is in a full analog path, then the output side gets routed with digital control. And in fact, our main XLR outs can be switched to AES out as well. So you can select whether you want your XLRs to be analog or if you want those to feed an AES output. There's lots of outputs on a field mixer like this. There's this multi-pin here, which is commonly used as a single cable tether to a camera. What that allows you to do is have one connection back to the mixer that includes both your left and right signal as well as a camera return 
oftentimes you want to monitor what the camera is actually laying down onto its recording media so that you can verify and make certain that at the mixer location the camera is receiving good audio. There's also other outputs as well. We've got tape level outs. We have a mono mic level out for if you wanted to feed yet another transcription recorder. So there's lots of output flexibility as well as the input flexibility. And especially as you get into more complex productions, for instance, in a setup like this, we have two cameras. We can take the output of this and feed it two fully balanced, in fact, we could feed three fully balanced line level outputs. And that's very powerful as the complexity of your productions go up. And John, with all that flexibility, you have to have a way to control this. Is it time to Indeed. produce uh, the, uh, <laughs> the audio uh, man's companion, uh, Sven? One of the things that if you notice, there's, there's no LCD display on the unit. And we intended to keep it as simple and clean as a faceplate and just with, with the controls. And one of the things that can often be complex is uh, lots of products have setup menus. And we have a setup menu where you go in and you can do some key combinations so that you can adjust things. You can change the phantom voltage from 48 to 12. You can assign what you want to the recording, whether you want your left and right tracks or if you want isolated tracks one and two. You can memorize some of these controls, and the way we get into the setup menu is by hitting a key combination. So let's, let's first exit, turn up our headphone level so that we can get Sven to start speaking. And we will, turn, we will go into our setup menu. What we just heard is Sven say AESA source. And we can have left and right. One and two pre One and two pre Now, Sven has an accent, so it takes a little time to understand Sven. But what that allows you is in the field, you don't have to have a cheat sheet card. You don't have to take the mixer out or select any dip switches or anything. Right from the faceplate of the mixer, we can do some of these setups. Some of them are going to be often set. Some of them are going to be infrequently set. One of the most common yeah, settings. Right. One of the most common setups is going to be output your output limiter threshold. So let's adjust that. 11 dBU. 12 dBU. So that's 12 dBU. 13 dBU. 13 dBU. So we can, in 1 dB increments, we can adjust our output limiter threshold. And we can have Sven tell us exactly what that is. DBU. Nine, plus 19 dBU. So we can go ahead and we can select that as, our, as our limiter threshold. And now. Let's make sure we turn our headphones on. This out. is all coming out of the headphone output. Uh, normally, you wouldn't be When we're pounding on this, you're seeing our limiter LEDs turning on, and our output is now limited to a plus 19 dBU. If we add more limiting, you'll see that on the metering, obviously. But Sven is a very simple way that we can listen in headphones, because this is only going to headphones. It's obviously not going out to program. You can hear tones in your headphones when you begin and end recording. So that's going to be handy feedback information in your headphones so that you have that information back at you. Uh, a major improvement over struggling to see an LCD readout. Yep. Uh, you know, so many devices these days come with LCD readouts that work great inside. You go outside in a bright day and you can't see it. Or you wake up on a cold morning and you're doing your first shoot of the day and you realize that much like your laptop, that LCD isn't going to do anything for a while until it warms up. So this is a huge improvement. I, I'm, I'm in favor of Sven, and I, I love his authentic <laughs> Reedsburg accent. I think that's quite remarkable. The fortunate thing is that the, the, the Sven selection items are, off, are, are actually not often used. They're, they're fairly infrequently used controls. So you don't really need to get into the setup menu except during that initial setup. Most of your controls are all going to be on physical controls right at the front panel. So that gives you a lot of power right in your hands. It truly is a lot of power. It is, uh, it is the sound man's dream. I think this is, uh, this is a very, very cool product to be self-contained and have five input channels and something this small and battery operated and then put recording to boot. Quite amazing. John, thank you for joining us. This is the uh, Sound Devices 552. Go to our website, take a look at it, read about it in even more excruciating detail than we've talked about today. It is a wonderful product. John, thank you for joining us. Thank you.